In today's lesson, we will be learning about slope. Specifically, how do we find slope from a graph? We're going to start by just looking at some definitions for slope. There are about five different ways that you can think about slope. The first is, it is the slant or the steepness of a line. So the higher the number, the steeper the slope. The smaller the number, the flatter the slope. The next is a fraction. Slope is always the relationship from rise to run. So we always want to write that as a fraction in reduced form. The rise is going to be the move in the vertical direction or the y direction, and the run is going to be how far it goes over left or right or in the x direction. So another way to think about rise over run is change in y over change in x. In fact, next to this bullet, you could actually write down what we call the slope formula. We use the letter m for slope, and the change in y just means you're going to subtract y coordinates. So we would take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If this looks a little strange, don't worry, the next video will talk to you about this slope formula, but that's really what it means. And then another definition, and the final one that we'll be looking at here, is slope is a rate of change. So if we graph position or distance on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, the slope of the line then would tell us how fast someone was walking. So rate of change is another word for slope. So how do we find slope from a graph? We've got three steps that you need to take into consideration. The first thing you want to do is locate two nice points on the line. Now nice points means the points are very obvious. They would be located right on the grid marks. You don't want to pick points that are kind of in the spaces because then you can't really be sure if it's at a half or a third or a fourth. So you want to make sure that they're actually on the corners of the boxes. Second, once you've located those two nice points, you're going to start at one of the points, and it doesn't matter which one you start at, and you're just going to count the rise and the run. So literally, how many boxes do you go up or down, and how many boxes do you go left or right? Now here's, um, we should probably mention something about when we count the rise or the run. If you go up, that is a positive number. If you go down, that is a negative number. And these um, signs are going to become important as we start counting the slope. If you go to the right, that is positive. And the opposite then, if you go left, that would be negative. So you want to keep these directions in mind as you start counting the slope. And then we're going to pull our definition from the previous slide here, and we're going to talk about slope being rise over run. Whatever number you get for how far you went up or down goes on top. Whatever number you get for how far you went left or right goes on the bottom. And that is your slope. The thing you want to remember, though, is always write it in reduced form. Do not write it as a mixed number. If you start writing slope as a mixed number, it's going to mess you up when we start graphing our line. So let's get started on some examples here. The first thing we're going to do here is just locate two nice points. It looks like the point 0, 3 is a nice point. And then if I go out a little bit, it looks like maybe 2, 7 is another nice point. You don't have to write the coordinates in, you just have to mark them on the graph, so just put the points. So I'm going to start at the bottom point here, and I'm going to count one, two, three, four units. And I did go up, so the rise is a positive four. Now I'm going to look at the run, and I'm going to go over to the right, two units. So my slope, and you can use um, either the word slope or you can use the letter M if you just want to start using M, that's fine. The M is four over two which does reduce to 2 over 1, or just 2. 2 would be fine. So what that means is actually to get from one nice point to the next, I would actually just go up 2 and over 1. And you see, I could have picked the point 1, 5. That's another point on the graph. Had I marked that one, I would have just gone up 2 units and over 1. So that's really the pattern for the line. So the, the moral of this story here is you can pick any two points on your line. As long as you reduce your answer in the end, you're all going to come up with the same slope. The other thing I want you to notice about this example is that we have a positive slope and our line is going uphill to the right. You kind of want to take note of that because when we look at a negative slope, it'll be different. All right, so our next example, let's look for another nice point here. Um, it looks like the point negative 1, 0 is a pretty nice point. And then maybe 5, negative 2 is another nice point. I'm just looking at these. You maybe could pick different ones in your notes. So I'm going to start at the point farther to the left here. 
And this time I have to go down two units. So the rise is actually a negative two. And the run, it looks like I'm going to the right. You just count the spaces here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a positive six. So when we make our fraction, negative two over six, this time we have to reduce. It becomes a negative one third. So note here, a negative slope is a downhill line. So it's going downhill. You always read a graph like you read a book. You read from left to right. So this would be a downhill line. All right, our next example. This one's interesting here. You can pick any two points here. So just put two points on the graph. And I'll start at the furthest one to the left here. And to get from the left point to the right point, I don't have to go up or down at all. So our rise is 0. Now the run would be, it looks like I'm going over 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So my run would be 4. We still make our fraction like we always did. So m equals 0 over 4, which is not reduced form. You'd actually have to, to simplify that. And 0 divided by 4 is just 0. Now I want you to write this down. This is a horizontal line. Anytime you have a horizontal line, you will never have a rise other than zero. So any horizontal line will always have a slope of zero. So from here on out, you really don't have to show any work. If you see a horizontal line, you would just know that the slope would be zero. If you think about the fraction, the zero on top is what made this slope be zero. All right, our last example is a vertical line this time. We're still going to pick two nice points, and you can pick any two points on the line here. Doesn't matter where you put them, we'll all get the same answer in the end. So let's first count the rise, and I'm going to start at the bottom and count. And it looks like the rise is 8. But to get from that point to the other point, I don't have to go over to the left or the right at all. So this time the run is 0. So when we make our fraction, m equals 8 divided by 0, if any of you are grabbing your calculators right now to try and figure out what 8 divided by 0 is, your calculator is going to give you an error message. This slope is undefined. Don't write no slope, don't write doesn't exist. It is undefined. That is the only word that you're going to be using here. Um, you can think of it this way. The slope is actually too steep. We don't even have a number to describe it. So write down for this. This is a vertical line. And any vertical line is always going to look like this. So no matter what two points you pick, you're always going to get a calculation like this. And so all vertical lines will have an undefined slope. What happened in the fraction is that we were dividing by zero. So anytime you divide by zero, your slope is going to be undefined.